Hello, this is Hakuda Bean, and I'm here today with r slash Tumblr. Tomorrow I'll be sure to go over that, those interesting lessons I wanted to go over, but today we're going to have fun with Reddit. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into this. <sighs> Magic system is never fully explained. Yeah, that's how life works. Imagine having a story said modern day America and the characters have several of pages with exposition on combustion engines and telecommunication networks before we get to the plot. I think this is absolutely correct and good writing advice, but also Victor Hugo would like to have a, a word with you about the pair. Heresy in, in sewer system circa 1832. Victor Hugo would like to have many words with you about the Paris in sewer system circa 1831. They said modern day American. Okay. I'll get you, and it will look like a bloody accident. Shut up! I mean, I'll end. I will end you. <laughs> Jim Carrey a Grinch was chaotic neutral, but Mike Myers' cat and hat was just straight up chaotic evil. Did you know that this movie is a reason why it is? This essay won't allow any more live action adaptation of Dr. Seuss's books. I can see. Still loving those noises. <sighs> Our friend who wears a mask, and if he were here, he'd narrow his eyes and lower his voice and say, I wore a mask each night, so you won't ever have to. Potential to DC to add little bat ears to the speech bubble every time someone imitates Batman. <laughs> I love that. <sighs> Who gives a freak about an Oxford com uh my I my parents, Jesus, and Barack Obama? Hmm. <sighs> Popular media tends to depict cat girls as having roughly the same preference in prey items as regular house cats, but this represents a misunderstanding of how feline prey selection works. Cats don't hunt mice because they prefer the flavor. Cats are hyper-optimized predators that will hunt and kill literally anything they can catch. Their purposes in terms of prey items are less a matter of, uh, of taste and more a matter of scale. You can only venture so high on a food chain when you weigh a 10 pounds. Given access to the force multipliers of tools to puzzle of thumbs, a cat a girl would absolutely look at T-Rex and see tonight's dinner. Oh, these tags. As far as a cat girl is concerned, a Tyrannosaurus is, is just a very large chicken. And she's got all the secret herbs and spices. <laughs> I love how we're, we're talking about the realism of a cat girl. It's Missy with another person. Quick, someone who's ever seen Scooby Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed, explain what's ha happening. Not possible. Everyone's seen Scooby Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed. Yes, you have. Stop lying to me. You have seen it. <sighs> have you seen anything unusual lately? Unusual for normal cities or unusual for Gotham? 
Did you say cloud or not? <laughs> oh, but we all know what happened. I was relieved when I realized the only damage to the time machine was through the wires. All I need to do now is find someone in ancient and similar to sell me some good quality copper. Someone screenshot this and put it on Reddit. We have to continue the cycle. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't think any movie will make me feel the same ethereal sense of otherworldly sorrow and disembodied awe as that scene in Lord of the Rings where the loyal citizen off into a doomed battle to ease his vindictive father while Pippin sings a mournful song of his people. I was like 12 and high off this stuff. These movies changed me. Maybe I should give them a watch one day. This one that is my favorite part of the whole trilogy. It's haunting. And that Pippin actually takes a happy walking song of his people, because Hobbit songs are generally happy and about food and drinks and gifts, and transforms it into a mourning song. This song is from Fellowship before all the hot heavy plots are hits, and they're still in the Shire. It's about walking, and how eventually all the bad things that scare us and you will fade away, and you'll be home by the fire. And Pippa takes it, changes the lines, the key, and sings a song that is truly fit for Denethor, its great hall. Knowing Billy Boyd gave his own melody to it and everyone had chills after hearing him sing it, this is how you get actors involved with the story and character. This is how amazingly well these films are cast. Fans haven't seen that haunting tune in echoing halls and caves and towers for 20 years now and it never loses its beauty. <sighs> oh yeah, I have to watch this. <sighs> Home is behind, the world ahead, and there are many paths to tread, through shadow, to the end of night, until the stars are all alight. Mist and shadow, cloud and shade, all shall fade, all shall fade. And even better, Billy Boyd composed a tune to the song, they performed it for Peter Jackson and everyone else while filming. They th only did one take, that very first take, I guess the one that, that's used in the film. He's just that good. I don't know because I never actually watched the movies, I'm sorry. <sighs> <sighs> hmm. Hey, come on, Mitchell, you don't know how Tumblr works. I'd be perfectly happy to lie to you if you wanted to know more. Okay, what's the funniest lie you have about how Tumblr works? You can find posts by searching for them in the, with the search bar. Hmm. <sighs> There's one thing I will never understand, it's Lord of the Rings fans wanting to be an elf in Middle-earth. I mean, sure they're graceful and pretty, but they live too dang long, and I have to witness an eternity of stupidity from the species around them. Like, imagine being Elrod and basically witnessing a cringe comp compilation of the human race. Nope, no thanks. I've been witnessing a cringe compilation of the human race my whole life. Elrod is not special. I mean... I had history classes as a kid, and also I I lived through 2016 to uh, uh, literally this date, and probably the future. I I'm not free from the cringe compilation of the human race is myself. 
I mean, we're literally having a, another genocide up, uh, just about um, just under a hundred years before, after or the last one. I'd say that's a pretty cringe compilation. <sighs> Strange amulets. Don't handle it. Contact your local wizards council immediately. Be from the nearest orb and await further instruction. Out of the way, swaggle, swagglers. I'm about to get some. I have been cursed for eternity. Out of my way, cursed fool. I'm about to get some. My past life memories have been awoken, and I was a horse that killed the cursed king. Oh, crap, for real? That rules. Congrats. Hey, quick question. Is there any way to tell when amulets are cursed? Because... I've been coming to a lot of them these days. <laughs> um... Trial and error, just poke it and see. That's horrible advice, don't touch cursed amulets. Wait, cursed amulets aren't real. So don't touch them. Don't touch amulets. You don't know if they uh, are cursed. You don't want to take that chance. <sighs> There's no such thing as failed relationships. Just ones that taught you something. My ex for one being a fussy eater taught me that I could never have kids. Imagine cooking a meal to someone you love, painstakingly trying to make sure it's exactly the way they like it, avoiding all spices, comments, and other sorts of flavor, just so that their toddler or freaking palate can endure it. And then they leave it on the table untouched for 35 minutes because anything more than a single degree if a room temperature is too hot. And then take three freaking spoonfuls of it. And then their tiny tummy is already full because somehow this freaking obese grown old ass man has the stomach capacity of a newborn infant and also kept her as wrong brand and therefore it is too spicy after all. And the epiphany lands upon you as a jet gently as an as a garland of wisdom lowered from the heavens by the angels themselves. Wow, I could not put up with this with shit like this from someone I could easily point hunt across the room. That is me. I could not put up with that crap. And I will not put up with that crap. You will eat what's given to you. <sighs> Weapon in a mass destruction? More like, uh, Drex nuts. Penis of mass destruction? <laughs> One note. A cough is heard in the back row. I am being kicked out of the club. <laughs> you got 1700 notes after that, though. I think you're welcome back in. <sighs> Nobody talks about Jesus' miracle of having 12 close friends in his 30s. I will explain that one. That is not a miracle. That is called Jesus is hot and he had at 12 Sims. Moving on. Maybe all the 11? One of the Sims was actually a chaser and Jesus didn't give if the Sim MB enough so the Sim MB betrayed a Jesus. I want to be very clear. I did not schedule this to post on Easter weekend. I want to be very clear. I did schedule this to post on Easter weekend. I want to be clear. This is coming out on, on the 13th. It's nowhere near Easter anymore. I'm sorry. <sighs> the thing about what is the about the baby when AI cast as a person is that you have to draw lines about around what is and isn't a person, it always ends up having some really uncomfortable implica implications about neurodivergent people. It's not a real person, it's just almost perfectly emulating one. It's repeating what it thinks it's supposed to say. It feels right now, but that doesn't mean it actually does. Girl, so am I! How can we prove it if it's telling the truth or just mimicking human speech? How will it know the difference itself? I'm still trying to figure that 
out myself. God bless. I think I have more in common with this computer than I do with you. <laughs> oh no. Am I AI? Oh crap. There is something so special about teen superhero team dynamics. From Power Rangers to magical girls and everything in between. In between. I help you defeat I'd evil. I let you sleep on my I on my lap when we get back home. I know everything about you. Things your parents never will. We've almost died together. We say for tests together. We are discovering ourselves. I hope I still know you in ten years. You turned evil once. I still got you a birthday present. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> this close to putting hot sauce on my toes. I forgot to give context for this. What context could you possibly give that would make this any better? <sighs> my cats, biscuits, and gravy are aggressive toe biters, and they will stop at nothing to obtain in the experience of feet in their mouth. <laughs> Your cat's names are Biscuit and Gravy? You win! Really? Your cats will stop at nothing to attain the experience of feeding their mouth. I hate the way you phrased it. Thank you. <laughs> it was extremely windy last night, and my boyfriend couldn't sleep, and I woke to find him on the Wikipedia page for wind. Boyfriend is sitting by his, his computer eating sausage with Wikipedia open to the page sausage. Fully immersive experience. They ate a Wikipedia via a, a, a neat guy who said, and Monder is always on some article like Gulf War. Literally, all three of these are me. I'm a Wikipedia GF. Sorry, I don't know to be more accurate to myself. You can fight me in the comments. <sighs> I just heard my mom say, You are very nutty. I let me out. And another softer. Okay, but next time. Um, there will be consequences. I did another meow. And a, you're right, probably not. <sighs> he lived, served cunt, died, got resurrected, served even more cunt. Didn't say his name, but you thought of him. Are we talking about Jesus? I'm not. I'm not even touching that. <sighs> hmm. What's that? Oh, you don't like my seeds? Well, this is a fruit that airs those seeds. It's by sour monoculture that is especially susceptible to pests and disease. How about that, idiot? Don't vague post about bananas, you scum. Hmm. <sighs> <sighs> Angry video game nerd er, 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 er voice. Two genders? That's it? And you don't get given one at ra- and you just get given one at random? You don't even get to decide which one you want? What a crap load of frick! What were they thinking? And if you want to change, you can't just switch. You gotta do a whole quest line just to transition. Why did the, in the devs transition to a better freaking game? Sorry, I had to yell. I had to do it for the true angry video game nerd. Although I do agree. <sighs> this might be the last one? We will see. Oh crap, there's four freaking pictures here. 
This is going to be fun. In the Apollo years, that sent military test pilots into space, not pilots or creatures. They came back in possession of extraordinary knowledge that by and then the personality of personal inclination, they seemed helpless to communicate. As the M9 and Apollo astronaut Michael Collins once put it, it was not within our end to share emotions or to utter extraneous information. As what it was like to go to the moon, Apollo 12's feet, Conrad said, Super! Really enjoyed it! It is really important to me that all of you learn about El Bean, an astronaut of Apollo 12 and a fourth man to walk on the moon who after 20 years in the U.S. Navy and 18 years with NASA, during which he spent 69 days in space and more than 10 hours of doing EVAs on the moon, retired to become a painter. Beautiful. He is my favorite astronaut for any number of reasons, but he's also like one of my favorite visual artists. Like, look at this stuff. Oh wow, that is beautiful. Look at that. That is amazing. It's also expressive and textured and colorful. He literally paid his own experience on the moon, and that's just really freaking cool to me. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Look at this. Is this is, is one of my favorite emotions of all, all time? Is anyone out there? It's like the perf. It's like the ultimate reaction image. Any time I have an existential, existential crisis, this is how I picture myself. And then there's this one. The fantasy for all of the six Apollo missions to land on the moon. There was no spare time. Every second of their time on the surface was budgeted to perfection. Sleeping, eating, putting on the suits, entering and exiting the LEM, drug collection, setting up long-term experiments to transmit to X Earth, everything. These types able to got screwed over by something, but for the most part, the astronauts stuck up to them. The crew of Apollo 12, P. Conrad, Albin, and Dick Gordon had other plans. Conrad and Bean had snuck a small camera with a timer into the LEM to take a couple pictures together on the moon throughout the mission. They had hit in the key for the timer and one of the rock collection bags with the idea of being to grab the key soon after landing, take some fun photos here and there, and then sneak, sneak the camera back to Earth to develop them. They had practiced where they would hide the key and how, would, how to get it out from under the collected rocks rocks back on Earth dozens of time. When they got to the moon, the key was nowhere to be found. Albie had spent precious time digging through the collection times before he caught it off. He can't have been pushed there a lot like anyways. He couldn't afford to spend any more time not on the mission's objectives. Oops. Conrad and Bean continued the mission as for the NASA plan while Dick Gordon, Gordon or orbited overhead. Fast forward to the very end of the mission, Bean and Conrad are doing the last checks of the LME before they enter to the la for the last time and depart from the moon. As Bean is sewing one of the collection bags, the camera key falls out. The unofficially planned photo time has come and gone, and he tosses the key over his shoulder to rest forever on the surface of the moon. This painting, the fancy, is that moment. There have, have never been three people on the moon at the same time. There was never an unofficial photo shoot on the moon. This picture could never have happened. The most experienced astronaut was the excited commander in charge of all aspects of the mission, including flying the little uh, model. Bruin Dinka suggested that the next most experienced crew ever to be assigned to take care of the command module since it was our only way back home. Pete had flown two Gemini flights, the second with Dick as his crewmate. This left the elite experience me to accompany the commander on the lunar surface. I was a rookie, I had not flown at all, yet I got the prize assignment. But once during the three year years of training which preceded our mission, did Dick say, it wasn't far, and that he wished he could walk on the moon too. I don't have his unwavering discipline or strength of character. We often fantasize about the joining us on the moon, but we never found a way. And I'm painting so, I, I, cannot, I can have it my way. Now at last, our best friend has come to the last 60 miles. 
Alvin, how about the fantasy? <sighs> There's also Alexei Leonov, writer and artist and first person to conduct a spacewalk. This is his art. Oh crap, this is beautiful. Look at that. So pretty. You can't forget this. The first art made in space. March 1965, Alexei Leonov made this drawing only moments after narrowly surviving the very first space ace walk. And those are moonwalking. Uh, those are the people who walked on the moon or in space in general. <sighs> really? Immortality. Do not stand at my grave and weep. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the dad. I am in glints of snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in morning's hush, I am the sweet uplifting rush of quiet birds circled in flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. Probably known as Dead Sad at My Grave in a Week. The first page shows an ontologist digging up a fossil out of a dig. It reads, Don't Sad at My Grave in a Week. I am not there. I do not sleep. Page two features seven prehistorical pre creatures living in the wild, not unfeatured, but unknowable. Each have modern descendants. Horses, said as ends, horse cell plants, and crocodilians. It reads, I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. The third age, so O.O.'s Archeo Oat Eric's in the treetops and the skies, then a modern museum goer reading the placard on also on display. It reads, When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds circled in flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. The fourth page shows a chicken in the field. It reads, I am not there. I did not die. A comic I made about in about 15 hours from my school's comic anthology. The theme was evolution. And that was beautiful. Blood and mutuals, what is there to do that's cheap and not alcohol based? Bongs and Croydon. There is a bloke at Clap and, and Common who, who will suck your or penis for 450. Hell, even play with your boss for an extra quid. I have zero desire to meet you, let alone give you money. 350? Dude. <laughs> okay. That was funny enough to edit on. Let's go. Today we went over some pretty interesting stuff, a lot more than just haha funny that I'm used to when I'm on r slash Tumblr.
If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm quite sure I'll have a lesson planned by then. If not, then it'll probably be time for some more Tumblr, or maybe I can read something from the SCP wiki. Who knows? Anyway, goodbye!